so we've already talked briefly about our um, different types of data, data types. All right. We've talked about our integers. We've talked about short ints. We've talked about booleans. We've kind of hit up D ints in real. All right. Um, but the main things that we've talked been dealing with today so far are booleans. All right. And what I brought up here is the assignment list. All right. This shows you the location of every tag that you have used in your program somewhere. If you create a tag, but you don't actually use it, it doesn't show up in this. All right. Um, and I got here by going to device configuration, right clicking on the PLC and saying assignment list. All right. Um, can you do it? No, nope, you can't just right click on device configuration. Um, and as you can see, there are little, um, all right, little diamonds. All right. Those are for Booleans. And there are, um, over here, we ha all right, so at the top, we have our address. So we have 7 through 0. Then we have a B that shows you for byte. Then we have a word. Then we have a D word. And we have an L word category. All right. So if I come down here and I make another, another tag, and this is where it gets really interesting if you mess this up. Um, we'll just call this for fun. Fun. That doesn't matter. Whatever I spelled it is fine. Notice it automatically jumped that. But if I make this a 13, it doesn't yell at me. All right, it has no issue with the fact that I've called that 13. If I come back to my program info, we're not showing here yet. All right. Um, but if I, I need to go into the program and use that somewhere. All right. So let's go ahead. Let's just uh, let's go offline before I get mad at this. Let's go ahead and put a new uh, count down timer. All right, we'll go count up down. Why not? All right, and we're going to call this what I call this fourth one. There we go. So now I've used it. So if I go back to my program information, you can see I've got overlap here. All right, so half of this is coming from uh, 13 and half of it's coming from 14. And it needs eight bits. Or not, sorry, sorry. It needs 16 bits for that word. All right, so a word is 16 bits. Um, so both of these numbers will change at the same point once we get to a high enough number. All right, um, so 13 and 14. Let's quick go back to our tag so we can look at those. So 12 and 13 is our accumulated. So as we count, right, that number is going to change. Um, our for fun, that is our non-accumulated value. All right. Um, going to take ages for me to get there. Do, 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 do. All right, let me uh, quick go ahead into our device configuration. My properties, give me my system and clock memory. Do that. There we go. All right, um, and let's go back to main. And instead of this, we're going to go uh, clock. We're going to go with the fastest clock we got, 10 hertz. All right, and let's go ahead and download this sucker. This PLC is not running anymore. I exited out of it. So. All right, um, so all I've done is I've just changed our uh, our count up here to count by itself. All right, I just put a 10 hertz clock in front of it. That thing is going to count like absolutely crazy. All right, um, down here we have another counter that's using our new for fun for its preset value. All right, so right off the bat, uh-oh, what do we got? I guess it wants something in front of this, doesn't it? Do 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 do. Oh, I need to do a full download. Sorry, guys. I do a full download so I get my clock. Made the same mistake I tell you guys not to do. All right, so you can see we're counting like absolutely crazy here. We're at 81, 89, you know, da 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 da. Let's go look at our tags. Our default tag table. Turn our sunglasses on here so we can see those values. All right. But what I more care about is here. Look at how four funds changing, even just because this one's changing. Right? I'm not doing anything to four fund value. 
that one's just changing because the accumulated value here is changing. All right. And that's because they are overlapped like this. All right. So it's using saying, well, I need 16 bits for this. And it's saying, well, here's the first 16. Here's, you know, here's the first eight. Here's the second eight. And we're using those same eight bits for two different tags. All right. Um, which starts to give you this all sorts of like crazy nonsense. All right. Well, if we actually look up here, notice how it's MB, MB0 clock memory. It's even got a little clock memory icon there. It's saying we're only using a uh, uh, we're only using the 10 hertz type bit of it. That's why it's the only one that's uh, triangled there. Um, but yeah, so this becomes really important. And you have to keep track of which ones you have used and which ones you haven't used, which is when this screen that we're on right now becomes really important for this. Um, because you might think, oh, you know, I'll just use 13, then I use 14. And that'd be kind of nice if it would like automatically adjust your numbers, you know, to say, oh, uh, M13 needs to be two bits wide instead of one bit wide. So it makes it 16. And so you automatically can't use 14. Or if it would be nice, if it would yell at you in your tag table when you did that type of thing, when you'd say, this is 12 and 13, this is 13 and 14. That's yelling at, you know, should say, are you sure you want to do this? But there are points where you may say, all I care about is this specific bit of that word, all right? So we know this is 12. So we may say, all I care about is, you know, so we're gonna say uh, test, we're gonna make this a bit, oh, it's already a bool, that's good. All right, and I can say, all I care about is address 12 bit four. All right, and again, it doesn't yell at you, all right? Even though we're, we've already used that somewhere, all right? We need to be kind of careful about that. Um, now, if we come in here back to our main, let's go ahead and make this our test bit so we're actually using it. Go ahead and download. Load. Let's see what's happening. So right now, this, notice we've already counted to one with this. We're cruising. We'd have to look at the individual bits. But, um, bit four. Probably, I guess, already. This value changing. No, oh, that one's changing. Doo -doo -doo. Sooner or later, we'll see this count if we watch it long enough. But there are times specifically where you do want to do that. I wish I could reset. Oh, I can reset this. Where's the stop button? Stop. Go. Yeah, we should have already reached four, so that's going to be extremely large, is what this is telling me. Should have done 13. All right, uh, let's go offline. Rewire this to 13. Rewire. And now let's go ahead and download that again and look at it. So there are times where you will want to look at just one bit of something. All right, and that will... You know, in theory, save you a lot of hassle and things like that. Look, we're already at four now. There's five. Six. So you can see how, you know, this is counting based on this. And now this is counting every time we get to what? One, two, four, two, four uh, eight. You know, basically every eight counts of this one, this one is counting. Thereabouts. All right. Um, so it's kind of interesting. But be able to, to look at that and how they compare and things like that. So just something to kind of keep your eye on. All right. Um, so that's kind of talking about our different data types again. All right. Um, and if we uh, come in here offline again. And we instead of making this a bool, let's go with a new data type. We guys haven't we haven't used um, is it a real yet. Let's go ahead and find a real. Uh, what's yelling at me? Fine, MD. Let's go with 16. Let's get a little difference here. Need to put that somewhere. Oh, this should do test now. Mm, it won't let me use. Won't let me use the real number there. Yep, not gonna let me do it. That's okay. I need to use it somewhere. So let's go ahead and uh, pull in. Uh, test with preset just so it shows up. Just 
is good, so it's not mad at me. All right, now if we come back to our program info again, you can see how that double or real counts as a double word. All right, so like okay, you know, here we have two eight, two uh, eight bit or two sixteen byte bit tags. Here is a thirty two bit tag, and we can kind of, look. We can give it a freaking long word. All right, so it gets even longer than that. All right. So your data types are going to be, end up being really very important, especially when we start dealing with analog numbers. When we're dealing with analog numbers and trying to compare things and those types of stuff, it starts becoming very complicated. All right. Um, I don't actually know how to do an analog tag on, on the Siemens PLCs. We have analog inputs, but I've never used them. Um, but we'll get to analog stuff when, we're when we get to the Allen Bradley world in a few weeks when we're in person. All right. Uh, but we will be, will be using these different data types, and you're actually going to come across issues because you're going to have a data type of a, a, um, a, a real for one thing, and you're only going to have an int for the other. So then you have to do a little conversion magic to go on um, because the, you want the decimal place when you might not want the decimal place. So there's a little bit of uh, craziness going on there is where it comes down to. So traditionally, we have no decimal places, but reals can have a decimal place. All right, And if we actually look at our root screen here, it says why we we can actually give these um, decimals. So here you see we can go up to three decimal points. All right. Um, so kind of nice in that aspect that we can do that type of thing. So, um, all right. So that's kind of my quick little intro into different data types um, and kind of being able to monitor what tags you're using in your bit memory versus your actual address. And look, it does show you your actual address over here as well. Um, and we do get the kind of, um, if you actually put your mouse over this, notice we have high-speed counters is what all these are. All right, and then we get back into real outputs, and then we have pulse outputs and things like that. So a lot is going on here. Oh, here are our analogs. A6, I, IB64, we have analog 2-1, two, 2-1. One, two, one. These are all 2-1. So um, that's because that's going to be a D word. That's why we have four analog inputs here, even though in the PLCs we only have one input. So... All right, I think that basically ends my uh, my little introduction to different types of um, yeah data types.